Gig tonight? Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where? Okay, great. I'm on it. Give me a couple of hours to pack a car and I'll see you there. Cheer, man. Gig. Cool. So that cool sound I've got, oh, I'm going to need to pack base. I'm going to need my SVT. I'm going to need 8x10 cab. I'm going to need a compressor. I'm going to take with me the Billy Sheen pedal for the overdrive. Oh man, I've got dual output. So I have to take oh, two SVTs, two 8x10s. I mean, more compressors. Man, how am I going to fit it in my car? Stage isn't that big. Or I can take the stop. It's got everything in it already on a small footboard. I'm loving it. Let's go. Hey, thanks for joining us. There's lots of conversations on YouTube, social media, Facebook, etc., around how do I use a Line 6 modeling product outside of the studio or outside of my bedroom, outside of my headphones. This video, I'm going to show you how I use a HX Stomp as a live rig to have everything that I need in one unit device. When I say everything, I also need a Wi Fi, but that's a different thing. Firstly, let's go through the Stomp itself. The Stomp is a Line 6 product. It's based on the Helix footprint. It has a single channel, eight block modeling unit, DSP. There on the back, you'll see I have two inputs. So I can support my dual output base, with attitude, or I can just use a single input and have that with a normal bass guitar, such as my BB series or my P bass. It has dual output. The dual output can be left and right, or it could be just mono. And we'll talk about that when we start talking about how we're going to configure it for the sound. I've added a separate pedal netics footprint to give me an extra two foot stomps. I'll go through when I show you the configurations that I use, what I use those for, and how I use this effectively with still a tuner and only four buttons. Let's go and have a look at HX Edit and see how I've got this configured. So here we've got. HX edit open up. I've got the stomp connected via USB to my computer and I'm looking at the HX edit to go through it. I find it easier to do that this way than going through the pedal board, but you can do all this through the pedal board. So off the back of this, you can see I'm using pretty well all of the blocks that are available to me. I'm using a dual output base going through two channels left and right. This is based on the work that John Willis has done through his Dr. Tone labs. Please go and check out his website. He's got some fantastic stuff on there, which I have completely plagiarized to the extent. It's important to note that I have, in my live rig is, is different to my recording rig in this fact that it's as simple as possible. While these look overly complex, the live is, is very simplified down to a single pedal board. I use one bass. I actually have a duplication of everything. I've got one for my attitude and one for um, a second bass guitar, which I built, which has got a second, also has two pickups in it. The pickups on the second guitar don't have the Demasia Relentless volume attached to them. So I've got a, I think it's a five or a 10 dB boost on the output of that patch, but they are identical patches. I have two different patches that I use for the guitars. This one has a detune in it, which allows me to change the pitch of the guitar based on the song. Uh, we do one cover song, which we play in C sharp, but I want to use the low, the drop D on my bass. So I use this to pitch half a step or a semitone down, which allows me to use the, um, the D. And I have a similar patch where I swap that out for a bass octaver. Other than that, the patches are identical. If I go through, I have a noise gate on. Now the pitch shifter is off by default and I only turn on for that one song where I need to go up by that semitone. 
and that's connected to a foot switch, which is foot switch one on the stomp. Right here, I then diverge into two channels. One is for the red or the P pickup, and the other one is for the blue, the, the neck humbucker pickup. We look at this one first. You can see the split um, is almost 50-50. If I go down to the main one, I've basically configured this for an Ampeg SVT Pro. And you can see on there the, the settings that I've got for that. Again, play those settings to your own advantage, but that's what I, I have. And then I use an 8x10 SVT cab um, through this. I'm, by the way, I'm using the updated 3.7 HX um, software. Uh, you can see a 52 dynamic mic stuck on the cap edge. I played around with this for a lot to try and get this to sound exactly how I wanted it. Again, your tone will be different to mine, but this is how I've configured it. So SVT Pro into an 8x10 cabinet. Now, if I was to do this on stage, stuff everywhere. I'm coming out of that into a Rochester compressor, and then I join back up to the outputs. Um, I've got this coming through as, as a basically 0 dB. If I look at the top one, which is the again the P pickup, I'm hitting that with a three band compressor first. I'm then going into the busy one jump and I'm then going into a pitch shift. This pitch shift is effectively, I'm using it like a phaser. So it's giving a little bit of a warble on that track. And then I'm going into a, a compressor to tidy all that up and give it a bit more bite. Um, you, as you saw on the Rochester, this is basically being used as a um, a heavily overdriven amp. I don't overdrive it a lot and I would have normally used on a live rig I would have used my Billy Sheehan EBS pedal but this is a, a great alternative within the box. And I then pop this out to, I used to use an EQ setting of JBL speaking that John Willis created but I've over time I've now moved this to um, an Ampeg 4x10 Pro cabinet. This came out with I think it was the 3.6 something or other HX update and I really like this it adds a standard cab I'm using a 57 dynamic to give that thinner sound again cap edge I on the bass guitars I really like the cap edge for guitars it's not so much but on the bass I really like using that cap edge don't know why again on this one I'm joining back I'm giving this a 3db boost to make them come out as an equal sound and then on the output I'm running this at center so left and right's coming out as left and right. I already have three snapshots. So I do run it in snapshot mode. This first one is, allows me to have the pitch whammy scheduled. So when I kick that in, it goes to a negative one. If I want to go up a semitone, so from E flat, because we normally play in E flat, so from E flat to an E for a standard tuning, then I can bump it up to a standard tuning. And then I can come back again the foot switches are set so that I can come back to the minus one, which is again off. The last snapshot I've got is a boost, and that boost basically gives a plus five dB on the output, which gives me a little bit more drive if I'm trying to solo or do a melody line that's got to cut through the guitars just that little bit more for that particular period of time. Um, but predominantly, I just run it on this minus one setting and use the pitch shift for that, as I said, for that one song. The octave version is exactly the same setup. The only thing I've done is I've swapped the pitch shifter out for an octaver. And you'll see the octaver is now only on that neck um, clean signal. From memory, the octaver set to however line six set up. Um, and again, it's on a foot pedal. And so that will just kick in and out and will only affect that bottom. So the distorted line will remain unchanged and the octave affects the, the lower clean signal that's coming through. That's about it. As I said, I now duplicate those so I can use two different guitars with two different pickup settings and get the same volume through the, the mix. So where I've got is my Attitude 810 and then down here I've got my Frankenstein 810. Again, these are the same configurations but with a different uh, volume boost at the end, plus two and a half percent. So the pedals are set up so that I've got the pitch whammy on the first button, I've got boost for the second one, I've got the tuner on the third one, I haven't changed it, I actually like the red flashing light, sue me. Button four allows me to connect between the 
octave and the non-octave. So I'll do that again on, on here. You'll see I've got attitude 8, 10, 4, 10. If I then press that button, it then goes to the attitude 8, 10 stereo octave. So I'm basically going between those two sets with option four. Everything else is set the same. Option five is the one I use to go from the attitude one to the Frankie one. So you see here it says attitude 810. I click five, it takes me to Frankie 810. And then back again. And I'm doing that using the command center function within the HX. Steve Salacci has a great video on, on how to set all that up. I can go through that in another video if you like it, put it in the comments and I'll show you how I've got it set up. All right, let's now go and talk about how we're gonna configure this for live use. When playing live, there are two things you need to worry about. Sound coming from the music making machines, tone, making them sound good, and then volume, making the audience be able to hear it. So there are basically two ways of getting the audience to hear it. The first one is through the front of house. So you connect up the stomp, which is making the tone, to the bass, which is making the sound, from the fingers which are making the magic and you're connecting that to a front of house which is then amplifying that to the audience so they can hear it. The best way to do that if you've set up a stereo signal is to then go left and right out of here using an XLR jack so quarter inch to XLR cables and going into the front of house. That will give you exactly what you're listening to on your studio through the front of house. And then the front of house engineer can then mix that appropriately with the venue, etc. Alternatively, which is what we prefer to do, is to have an in-ear monitor system. We come out of the back of the in-ear monitor system to the front of house through a crossover patch bay. So again, I do left and right out into the um, in-ear mixer. And from the in-ear mixer, we then go out to the front of house. That gives me um, exactly what I want to hear in my ears, um, the way I want to hear it, and I can mix the other band member around, and the front of house gets what they want to hear, which is coming from the tone machine. The third way of doing this is to connect to an amp. The reason you connect to an amp is for two reasons. One, looks cool on stage. Two, allows you to get a monitor feedback. So if you can't hear because there's no monitor feedback, or there's no in-ear monitoring system, you need to be able to hear what you're playing to make sure the magic's happening. So therefore you need to use either a fallback speaker of your own or the bass amp. And I'll show you how to use that in a moment. The other reason to be using the bass amp is because the venue's too small. There is no PA other than for the vocals and you just need both stage volume for yourself and also so the audience can hear the magic that you're making through the tone machine out of the music making device. Connecting to the front of house can also be done instead of going directly from the unit if you're using the bass amp on stage for some stage sound because there's no fallback for example then most bass amps these days have a direct out or a DI plug on the quarter inch plug on the back. What I find quite convenient is that I can come out of the mono send from the back of the, the stomp into my amp and then come out of the DI and set it as pre-EQ um, on the amp and therefore it bypasses all the EQ settings at the front and it's basically as if I've just plugged this into a DI which goes into the front house. So that's also quite convenient therefore you don't need to be worrying about quarter inch to XLR jacks, you don't need to worry, you're just looking for the front of house guy to give you a cable with an XLR on it, you plug that into the back of your amp, you plug this into the front of your amp and you're good to go. Let's check out that third way. The rig you can see here is my studio version of my live rig. Again, two by 10 cabinet, because the assumption is the room is too small for a front of house, probably doesn't have a PA, the fallback that can hold the bass, or the PA can't hold the bass at all, it's just for vocals. So I only need a two by 10 cabinet to get some sound off the stage so I can hear it, and the audience can hear it. It's an F500 Mark Bass uh, amp. This amp is a 500 watt amp if I run it through four ohms. At the moment with the one cabinet, I'm running it at eight ohms, so it's running it around about the 250 watt. If I had a second cabinet, 
another 210 or the 4x10 that's underneath it or two 4x10s, 15s, whatever, then it will run at the full 500. The blue cable coming out of the back is connected into the um, left mono jack on the back of the HX Stomp and the other end goes into the effects return on the mark base. By doing this on the mark base, it doesn't bypass the EQ section like it does in some amps, but it allows me to bypass the preamp so I don't have to worry about gain at the front end coming out. So I bypass the, the gain structure. I can then EQ on stage using the amp to adjust for any of the venue settings that I need to worry about. This to me is a, a great output. And as we described earlier, I can then also DI off the back of the amp as a mono signal coming straight into the front of house if it can take that it doesn't have monitors. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys have learned something about how to take the magic through the machine to the Tone Master and to get some amplification when you're playing live. Honestly, the HX Stomp is so great as a bass machine for live music. You can augment it with other pedals. Friends of mine are not using the onboard compressors, but are using compressor pedals. Some people are still using um, the overdrive pedals in front or behind and just using it for the amp modeling. However you want to use it, it's perfect. Um, and again, don't be scared to connect it. And so you go. If you've got comments, please leave them below. If you've got questions, please leave them below. If you've got advice on how you set yours up differently to the way I do it, please let me know. Everyone can learn. Catch you around. <laughs>